Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the One Nation of Gamers 2016 circuit for Hearthstone, of course. My name's TJ. I'm joined by Chalky, and we're about to jump into the winner's match of feature tournament number one, Group A. It's going to be LBYS versus Shub. Two players that made it here through the opens. Surprised to see both, well, surprised, but not surprised to see the uh, both invited players actually fall down to the loser's match for Group A. What do you think, Chuck? I mean, I definitely think the invited players, Firebat and Admiral, are both very good players. Don't think anyone's going to dispute that, so I think it's small sample size to really be claiming, like, oh, man, qualified players are so much better. But uh, it is, you know, no no new circumstance to LBYS and Shoop. Like you said, they've, they've been playing in both the Opens. They made it far in both of them, and uh, this is familiar territory. They're very at home playing Open Cups, and that's really what this is. So maybe... For these players, where they have a little bit more to gain, uh, whereas to fire someone like Firebat, it might just be another tournament. Uh, maybe they're preparing more. Maybe they're taking this more seriously and not letting any chance in the limelight to escape them. I think they have a lot more to gain. And, uh, of course, we also have to remember back to the 2015 circuit for One Nation of Gamers, where LBYS and Shoop were front runners for Geico points nearly the whole season. We saw them on multiple opens. We saw them each on at least a feature. Um, so they, these guys are no strangers to not only open tournaments, but the O and OG format in general. So, uh, that's cool to see. Of course, we have added a little bit more depth. Um, I don't know if there was a ban last season. No, there was. Was there? It was so long ago. I don't know. I don't think there was. There was no ban last season. There was no ban last yeah, season. Yeah, no ban. So that was added, of course. Last the, season was, uh, of course, the... The era of Druid Warrior Warlock. If you yeah. remember uh, the Bop It cast. <laughs> of course I do. Listen, it's we got people... pretty bored. Yeah. It's almost a <laughs> it's pretty nice bored to see scoots. It's nice to see. I mean, there's three classes shared in this match, but I think there's a lot more diversity nowadays. And I think Blizzard, I think they learned a lot from the last competitive season of... Yeah not letting three classes dominate the game. Yeah, it, having a ban adds so much more depth, even if it isn't depth that is easily recognized. It's, de it's depth that exists. And, you know, it also just adds like depth, yeah. a fourth class, which I think is something Blizzard certainly likes. Mm -hmm. uh, just That just literally increases the number of classes you're going to see by one-third. So. Literally one more. Yeah. Which is pretty huge. I mean, for the same amount of games, to see more class diversity, even if it's in, in kind of like a forced way like that. Uh, but we are going to start with one of my favorite matchups. It's very intricate. Uh, Freeze Mage. And for Shoop, I think this is, this is a huge match for him. I mean, we've seen the rest of his lineup. It's a Warlock deck, which I would assume might even be like a Kazan Reno deck, because he has Flare in his Hunter deck. Yeah. And so if he can pin down this Freeze Mage of LBYSs, the rest of the series might just be a breeze. Yeah, and, you know, because we, we saw his Warrior deck earlier, of course that's an obvious ban. If you're running a Freeze Mage lineup, you are 99% going to ban Warrior. Um, unless you know that it's like Face Warrior. And you unless you know it's it. Patron. I don't think well, Patron's yeah. that bad anymore. If you don't um, know what it is, I'm saying. Yeah, if you don't know what it is... Or if you know it's control. You you most likely have to ban it. I think yeah. that's a very common strategy. Uh, I was considering bringing like an aggro freeze mage and not banning warrior. As crazy as that sounds, I've got like an 8% win rate against warrior with that deck. And that, that's like quadruple the average. So it, it's pretty crazy. I think there might be some merit to doing it, but... Uh, yeah, we just see every Freeze Mage player ban Warrior, essentially. Mm -hmm. So the Freeze Mage Mirror, it's kind of similar to the Patron versus Freeze matchup, where it can go to Fatigue, but uh, if you try and play too hard for Fatigue, you end up just getting burned out. So it's this intricate balance of you want to draw some cards, but not too many. And the Double Forgotten Torch kind of adds a new element. You're basically playing with 32-card decks um, when both players have two copies, which we can see they do. 
So that makes it uh, the fatigue game plan significantly weaker. Uh, it makes it stronger if you have two torches and they have none. But now that the deck's been more refined and everybody has two copies, uh, really going to fatigue becomes that much harder. So you so can the, you can see these players just playing draw spells like consistently. Yeah. They don't care. <laughs> yeah, they they're just trying to be the first player to you know hit the, hit their power power drops, like uh, making sure that they have Alex Straza right away. Now, making sure that they can get, you know, Emperor Thorsham. Well, Emperor Thorsham's not nearly as Yeah, it's uh, not as huge because, because they don't no play Antonitis. Antonitis. Yeah. And I think if either player had an Antonitis, it'd be a significant advantage. Uh, but neither of them are really opting to do that. Yeah. And you can see LBYS is kind of hesitant about picking this Acolyte because if there were a coin Emperor that you helped your opponent draw into, you'd kind of feel like an idiot. Yeah. Hmm. Need a player picking up that Alex Straza, and it's hard to say. We uh, are the getting, hands are the hands are nearly identical. We're getting into the turns though, where you have to play something extremely awkward. And for Shoop, the secret that his mad scientist pulled was Ice Barrier, which is terrible in multiple ways. Uh, first of all, it makes it so you have an Ice Barrier in play, and you can't play the second one, so you have another dead card in your hand. And yeah. second of all, you didn't pull an ice block, which is huge. Like that card's yeah. really good in this matchup. Yeah. Uh, whereas Ice Spirit does absolutely nothing. So you you see players in this matchup just throwing out whatever they can, getting rid of cards, making sure they're not the guy on ten cards. Blizzarding on an empty board, frost noping on an empty board, uh, things like that. Um, Doomsayer. You never see players attack base. That's one thing. You usually don't want to attack base. That you know for a fact that it's uh, ice block and not ice bearer, but there's really never any way there's, for you to there's know never, that. There's never, yeah, you can never check because yeah, so. if you check, you are 50 50ing, and 50 50ing yeah. your opponent to gain eight is a terrible deal. Yeah, sometimes in other matchups, you that extra two damage that you're getting in with that novice engineer early on matters, but you just can't afford to, to risk giving them eight extra health in a matchup that's already so close. Yeah, both players just uh, got in two damage early this match, so no real. Sometimes if you have like an early hand like Mad Scientist, Mad Scientist, Loot Hoarder, you can chip in like 10 damage, which is a really big deal because then you get to save your Alex defensively. Yeah. Uh, which when both players play really well, usually a defensive Alex doesn't come into the equation. Um, Unless one player draws their Alex substantially earlier than the other. And right. You do it out of necessity, but a lot of, of course. times you've lost the game already at that point. If you defensive Alex, the thing is, you can't also ice block unless you've emperored both of them. So the turn you Alex yourself, if your opponent just has 15 points of burn, you lose. Uh, so that's why it really doesn't see play much. And uh, 15 points of burn is not very hard to come by, and a lot of times players will keep 15 damage if they haven't seen Alex yet. Just yeah. to make sure that a defensive Alex doesn't pull them out. You of will see some really strange plays like just pinging and passing if you when they could pop the block, but they know if they pop the block and their opponent Alexed, they would lose. Mm -hmm. So this is one of those turns. Uh, he has Ice Barrier up, so he can play Ice Block. Yeah. Um, he could start getting those Forgotten Torches into his deck. Um, which is very important too, because it increases the likelihood that you draw into burn. It also makes it so that you are less likely to draw Alex Straza. But at this point, LBYS has so much burn in his hand that he might not even need Alex Straza. Yeah, and that does have the dual purpose of letting you Alex yourself. Yeah. So, like we talked about, not a huge thing, but you know, you'll take any advantage you can get. Mm -hmm. And the fact that LBYS uses burn so quickly leads me to believe he doesn't plan to Alex his opponent. Yeah. I mean, he's Alex would do six damage at this point. That's only five more than just your hero power. So I would expect him to just hero power, <laughs> slowly chip away, and maybe set up with like Pyroblast as yeah. kind of his Alex draws a replacement. Uh, it's really important to keep track of all the burn spells that have been used, though. So for LBYS, he has three fireballs in his deck, including those torches. Mm -hmm. He's got his uh, Frostbolt Ice Lance kit, and he's got Pyro. And that's it. And so, if Shoop has some way to survive that, he would just win. Because yeah, that's but all, all the damage in his deck. This list doesn't run heal bots. Yeah. Uh, 
Alex Straus has not been drawn for either player. Certainly and a big deal. Shoop has a reasonable amount of burn himself. Shoop can actually pop next turn. Uh, but it would make him weak to Alex. But here's the thing. Oh, yeah. He could pop at if one you, also, which yeah, is a big deal. Yeah. I would pop if I were him because the thing is, the way LBYS played with those two torches, I think it indicated he didn't have Alex. Mm -hmm. And so you're basically thinking, okay... If Alex was in his last two cards, okay, I'm in a bad spot. Damn. But what to do? I think I would go for it. Just uh, fire off the the torches and take your uh, opponent to one. Yeah. He can fit it all in because of Emperor, right? Yep. That fireball is one mana. Yeah. Uh, the, the Ice Lance is zero. The Frostbolt is one. Okay. He even gets to... Uh, not use the zero mana. He's going to opt to use coin instead. Yeah, uh, I mean, he does have another Frostbolt in the deck, I do believe, so... Yep, so he's going to set him to one, and I mean, this game looks to be over at a rapid pace, because barring that Alex draws a draw, LBYS is basically just dead. Uh, both of his blocks are going to be down before he even gets close to popping Shoops first. Yeah. And like we talked about, this is a huge win for Shoop if he can get there. I, he, there's a, he might even have enough <coughs> oh, he to can, get through Alex. Right. Yeah. I mean, even if there was a defensive Alex draw, He'd I still win, probably. don't think LBYS can win because yeah. Shoop would have him checkmated over three turns. Well, there it is. We'll see. We're going to find out, yeah. So he insta plays. I, I'd like Shoop's... him to attack with the 2-2 two -two this turn. Um, your opponent's going to gain eight. Oh, but, <laughs> there it is. Yeah, that's, that's just game. Exactly. Like... Even through a defensive Alex for 14. And both blocks. Yeah, you just see how kind of with these new lists with no heal box, uh, being the aggressor is the way to go. Yeah. yeah. So that's game one. Wrapped up pretty quickly. We Fatigue didn't come into it at all. Uh, these new burn freeze mage lists with a lot more burn in them and no heal box, they certainly create a much more explosive mirror match. Yeah, you you just have to spot windows and win conditions early. Uh, in standard freeze mage, you're mostly looking for big turns with emperor, or sorry, with uh, with emperor and with archmage antonitis. And it's a pretty linear win condition where you know <clears throat> you have a lot more AOE, you have more removal, and <clears throat> you just stall until you can alex them and kill them. But with this list, there's a lot more, you just a lot go. more lines of play. So yeah, we Sometimes we didn't even just... see an aggressive Alex Straza. Yeah. All right. Well, moving into next match, it is going to be Sh uh, Shoops Hunter versus the Zoo Warlock from LBYS, which is, seems to be more of a standard to it. I did see a, a Doom Guard in the Mulligan. Draws the, draws the flare. How happy about that. And uh, this is about as good of a draw you could ask for as Zoo. This is, like, perfect. Um, the Owl's going to hit a Scientist on Curve, he's going to have Imp King Boss, he's going to have Argus on Curve, and there was no one-drop for Shoop, which was incredibly important. Yeah. Uh, so, I would say, you know... And a Doom Guard, there you Zoo, go. Zoo is certainly not favored, but with the draws the way they are, uh, LBYS is looking in fine shape. Yeah. You basically need to curve out, and you have to have a Defender of Argus at some point in the game. Like, those are the, those are the two keys. Uh, because just heads up with, you know, pure quality of creatures without Defender of Argus, you're probably going to lose a race, just because they have more burn, the hero power wheels you down. Both hero powers deal damage to you. Blade Zook is certainly good, but when you're trading and your opponent is, you know, getting to go face and get more damage as the Warlock player, that's really bad for you. It's going to go with the Bran, which will uh, work a lot better with Argus, but it's going to get answered really easily. Like, I feel like this was such a trap of a draw for him. Um, kind of baited himself into thinking, okay, this is going to be really good if this lives, and it's probably going to live. And you played yourself. Yeah, I mean, he he would have been so far ahead if he just played the Imp Gang boss. Yeah. He would have been able to trade in and then Argus up two minions with the, with the spawn imp. Uh, and instead, suddenly he's on the back foot. He can clear off Leoc and set up some taunts, though, so... It's not the end of the world. That's a poor draw, though. Yeah, second Flame Imp, I mean, this is a reason why some players have cut the second Flame Imp, is 
while it's definitely insane on turn one, it's not what you want on turn six. Yeah, against especially against a hunter. Right. Because a lot of times, by the time you're playing it on turn six, they're getting close to killing you anyway. So I guess he has Doom Guard to discard it. You're not you're not too upset about that, but um, this is a lot of burden in Shoop's hand. We'll see if Lucky wow. West can push through. When you have to flare and give up a hero <laughs> power, like how terrible does that feel? I mean, he did pick up a one drop, so it's going to be a net gain for him. And I think he he was really just looking to cycle towards Unleash the Hounds. Mm -hmm. uh, but Flair was certainly not the optimal card for him there. Yeah. Yeah, and, and... he just can't play Flame Imp. I think it's a, it's a smart play, though. Yeah. You can't afford to take that extra three damage, even though you know, it feels good. Oh, I'm going to discard one card from I... the guard. I'd like to see him play greedy and be a little weaker to unleash because I feel like the flare telegraphs extremely that Shoop's hand is bad. Um, if you're flaring over hero powering as Hunter, like, your hand's pretty bad. He's even just going to go all face. Oh, oh it's going to get oh, no. hard punished. Oh, this is insane, especially with a quick shot. This is brutal. Quick shot to reload. Well, if it all goes Doom Guard, I think as uh, as shoot, you just play for board, and you should have this locked up. Yeah. Just uh, abuse a sergeant into the... under one of the hounds into yeah, go face. Yeah, he's gonna go. This is a little aggressive because now he's dead to PO plus something. Uh, I think he could have played even more defensively than this and still won, but. Gonna have to draw. Yeah, Egg's not gonna do it. Nope. So nope. Die to that quick shot. Even has to trade into a 1-1. One, one. Shoop takes an early 2-0 lead. I agree. <laughs> WYS got the short end of the stick a lot that game. Uh, the, the implosion for 2 was just sort of the icing on the cake. Yeah. Uh, but as you said earlier... Uh, you know, drawing that brand, it, you, pulling it on empty board feels good because you're like, oh yeah, I'm gonna double dip into this defender of Argus. But M King Boss would have put him in a lot better of a spot. He could have yeah. traded the imp that would have been killed into something to go on the board, and they would have had Bran to follow up with his Argus. So he put himself in a little bit of a rough situation there. But that yeah. unleash just was pretty brutal off the yeah, top. Yeah, I don't know if he would have won uh, had he not gone for the brand, but in hindsight. Certainly shouldn't have gone for that brand. Yeah, uh, but Shoop does have a 2-0 lead now, so he's got three opportunities to take a win with this final deck, which is Warlock. And it uh, looks like it is going to be some kind of defensive Warlock. Um, probably Reno, but could be Demon Hand Lock, which I've yeah. seen lately. Yeah, and as a Reno Lock, he basically drew exactly what he's looking for. He drew the, yeah. one, zo the one Zombie Child, the one... Owl, the one Dark Bomb. Yeah. And as a Zoo player, I kind of view this as a matchup where you just ignore everything. You're like, okay, how likely is he to have this? Not very likely. Not going to play around it. So you just go face, play your guys, and beat them up. So, Demon, I think Demon Hamlock is starting to make a comeback. And the only reason I say that is because uh, I played in Tuesday Night Hype on Tuesday. And, uh, Corn Echo beat me in the round of four, um, and he he ended up winning the tournament. And he had this weird lineup. He had Dragon Priest, Demon Handlock, not Reno, just Demon Handlock, old school. And his final deck, his final deck was, uh, oh, I don't even remember. Yeah, well, just those like, two. That sounds like a terrible lineup, TJ. And he won. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, hype is an open tournament where you have to win like nine matches in a row or something ridiculous, because there's like a group stage. Um, but yeah, it was super weird. So um, this is almost for sure Reno, uh, just yeah. because implosion, abusive sergeant. Wow, that is a bold implosion. Hmm. I mean, that's about what you can expect, right? Like, yeah. What else is he? I guess he, he could coin Belcher. Gorbuck but face. then he's SM Orc. Yeah. <laughs> Dope those OMG scoots in the chat. Jesus. <laughs> so, so. 
Oh, uh, love it. Yeah, but I mean, you kind of look at this and you think, what is... What does uh, Reno Lock really do against this board? Mm -hmm. He does pick up a Shadow Flame. Yeah, that'll be helpful. But if you can what keep can something on the board... What Shadow Flame? Yeah, everything's going to die. I would assume, yeah, he's certainly going to kill this Emperor off, and then he won't really have anything to Shadow Flame. On turn... S no, he can uh, Owl something, then Abuse the Stars in his Owl, and then Shadow Flame it. I think I like Trade... Trade Egg Implosion. That's what he's going to go for. Obviously, you're sad if you roll a 2, but if you roll a 3, you're feeling pretty good. Yeah. All right. Yeah, that's good. Works yeah, and I mean, it's not quite checkmate or anything, especially because there are cards like Reno Jackson in the deck, but... Uh, Owl plus Abusive plus Shadow Flame is a full clear because the Imp won't oh. spawn. And neither will the... Oh, I didn't even see the Abusive in his hand. And he yeah. gets to tap. Boom. Never mind. Yeah, so the... the if Dragon Egg works the same as everything wow. else, yeah, it literally does. everything it else, does. then Nothing it Nothing is spawn. going to spawn. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> And now, I mean, look at these bombs that Shoop just has to follow this up with. He's got Healbot, he's got Belcher, he's got Dr. Boom, he's got Big Game Hunter, just in case MBYS has something tricky up his sleeve. Yeah, the important thing here is not get too greedy. Um, Dr. Boom might look appealing, but then you're dead to, like, P.O. Doomguard. Yeah. Oh, especially when you pick that... Well, I mean, if you're gonna draw like that, like... Go ahead. Yeah. Have your plus 18 health. And suddenly... LBYS is probably thinking right now, man, I well, wish I could play Druid. Yeah, Druid is pretty good against this deck. LBYS just doesn't play Druid. Just he's, hates uh, it. He's not quite dead yet, but... Well, yeah, that's true. It's looking pretty bad. And he, he doesn't run as many bombs in his Warlock deck into this, you know, like, a, yeah. he tops out a Doom Guard. he doesn't have Sea Giants or Boom, as far as we can tell. Maybe Based he's on... got that, uh, that young Bran and Hanso Meccano deck. And he just quadra wind furies to the win. Brandon Hanzo seems bad. Why? <laughs> because I mean, I guess if you I mean, if you if you get lucky and get multiple buffs. I mean, all, we're gonna get lucky, TJ, in this scenario. We're gonna be rich. Oh, there it is. Part number <laughs> one. At this point, LBYS is just like, I'm just gonna smork and hope it works. Yeah, I mean, basically, if he brands into P, if he taps into PO or tops PO and then taps into abusive with brand, that's a eight burst. See if he top taps PO, just gonna hope it smorts and works out. Me IRL. <laughs> Same. All right, do you trade here to play around Owl PO Dimgard? Oh, wait, he has a Void Walker. Yeah, no point. Man, there's no tension in this match. He's just got it all. Now, he, he can't even Sapuku. It's a double Flame Imp. Sapuku? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. It's like, uh, it's like the Japanese version of Sudoku, I'm pretty sure. Okay. I'll believe you. I trust you. Yeah, this one's <laughs> this one's gonna be locked up, and I think that's that's not lethal. It's only off. thirteen. Yeah. Damn, he has to heal by it. Yeah. Heal bot. It's still pretty much the end. Does he have any outs whatsoever? Hanso Meccano P.O. That would, would do, it. do it. If you got Wind Fury on yep. one target. Yep. He'd need it exactly on the Doom Guard, by the way. No? Yeah. Because Enhanso on the brand would only be... Oh, he's at 19, not 17. But he, but he gets two chances. He's <laughs> brand. Yeah, yeah, there you go. It's insane. Well, 
But no. I mean, I guess he still has a chance. Yeah, we, wow. Oh, no, he, he, okay. he, he's done. My eyes are open. The Earth the Ring farce here. This is like watching a... He's finally dead. It's like watching the end of a really sad movie. That Feels you know, good, you. man. This is like watching the end of Fox and the Hound. Yeah. Like it's five years later. That's you know exactly, exactly what I thought. You know exactly what's going to happen. You know that it's going to be sad. But you still watch. But you, you, you still watch it anyway. And you're like older and more mature. So you know how to deal with the sadness better. But it still just stings. TJ, this sounds like another very specific example. Yeah. Has this, has this happened recently? Yeah. Oh. Yesterday. <laughs> no. But that's Shoop. Shoop's going to take a 3-0 victory. And uh, that means... That was the winner's match, right? Uh, it was. So, uh, Shoop's going to move on into the, the semifinals. Or finals. No, he moves on to the finals. Semifinals. It's semifinals. There's eight people in this tournament. The finals of Group A. Well, no. The semifinals. Now he plays against second place from Group B, which will be tomorrow. <laughs> On this lovely broadcast brought to you by TJ and Kaparian. <laughs> Don't worry, I got your back. What would I do without you, Chuck? So he moves on to the semifinals, guys. Yeah. Um, but we still have one more person from this group to determine mm -hmm. uh, that will also move on to the semis. LBYS, not quite out. He'll be in the last match of the day, mm -hmm. the decider match. But next we have Firebat versus Admirable. Yeah, so. Which is the loser's match. Yeah. So. Yeah, I got a little bit confused there. I thought we were on an open. Yeah, so Shoop will go. Yeah, Shoop will go to the semifinals. That means uh, Shoop guarantees himself top four. I'm correct about that. Yep. And which means he guarantees himself at least seven hundred and fifty dollars and ten Geico points. Seems good. Which puts him at at least twenty three Geico points, which would put him from first to first to first to even further in first. Yeah, so um, that was just a really impressive performance. And uh, like Chalky said, up next is going to be Admirable versus Firebat, the two invited players for Group A. But we are going to have to go to a break before we get into that match while I go and get some ice cream and watch Fox and the Hound. Meanwhile, during the break, you can head over to geico.onog.gg, get a Geico quote, and by doing so, enter in to win a sick Alienware PC. But don't go anywhere, guys. More 2016 One Nation of Gamers circuit feature number one presented by Geico and Alienware. We'll return right after this.